So friends, welcome back to our channel, Learn with Gigs. Uh, today I have invited Aryan Pokhriel for the live Power BI mock interview. So let's begin with the mock interview round. And before that, please do like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new to it, and you can also follow me on Instagram, Learn with Gigs. Hi Aryan, uh, can you please introduce yourself first? Thank you so much, Shishang, for welcoming me on your channel. So my name is Aryan Pokhriel, and I am from Agra, Uttar Pradesh. I currently work at Tectonica as a Power BI developer intern. In my role, I am mainly focusing on learning new custom visuals and uh, regression for regression testing and updating the test cases and test documents. What all skill sets you have in from data analytics point of view? From data analytics point of view, I have learned Excel, Power BI and SQL. Okay. Let's focus on a power query of Power BI. So uh, referencing a table or copying a table, which one is a good option? So if you're working with a power query and you have many tables in power query, so better the better option would be to reference a table. Why? Because referencing a table will, ha will ke also keep the original tables in the query and whatever transformations you do in the original table that will be reflected in the reference table also. Okay. And what kind of data sources you have utilized in Power Query? Till now, uh, including my personal projects, I have used Excel files, CSV files, SQL databases, and currently I work with uh, APIs to fetch my data in the visuals. And in which connectivity mode you have pulled the data as of now? Uh, till now, I have uh, used the import mode connection and the composite mode in my personal projects. Composite mode. What is composite mode? So composite mode basically uses import mode as well as uh, a direct query connection where, when you are using any SQL database or any kind of uh, external source. How do you set up this composite mode in Power BI? In Power BI, if you go to the data model section, you can uh, select the uh, import mode for your uh, SQL data as direct query and you can uh, specify a uh, specific SQL query for the kind of data you want to pull from the SQL database. So in Power Query, is null equal to blank? Are null blank same? So the null and blank are not same. So they are these are two different, uh, null is a different kind of data and blank is a different kind of data. So they are not same uh, in Power BI. So if you have that kind of data in Power Query, for example, then how will you handle it? So if you want to handle the null values, you can basically uh, use uh, measures of central tendency like mean, median, mode. So according to the requirement, you can replace those null values with either the mean or the median or the mode or the average or whatever the requirements allow you to. And to handle blank, uh, you can again ask your authority, senior authorities, for to show how to handle uh, the missing data like the blank or not. Suppose you take the example of uh, a calendar table. So you don't have a calendar table and you want to create that in Power Query. How will you create that? So if you want to create a calendar table, you can use a function called uh, calendar function. So calendar function requires two inputs, a start date and an end date. If you have a start date and an end date, you can mention them and you can create a date table. If you don't have a start, uh, an end date and you want to create a dynamic date table uh, based on uh, your data, so you can mention the fir first date, the start date, and then in the end date, you can use the date function and the today function to uh, create the dynamic date table. That way, your date table will always have the latest date uh, in the data. How calendar function is different from calendar auto function? Okay. Sorry, sir, and I can't recall now about calendar auto. Okay, okay. Suppose you are provided with a big fact table. First of all, tell me what, what is the requirement of breaking that big fact table into multiple dimension fact tables? So uh, when you have a big fact table and you want to do the analysis, so you must have uh, the smaller dimension tables so that you have the master data of that fact table. So the master data helps you uh, to do the analysis and uh, the master data will contain the uh, unique data which you can uh, use and perform the analysis. So uh, normalizing that fa big fact table will be the best option to do a better uh, analysis. Okay. Do you know about slowly changing dimensions? Slowly changing dimensions? No, so I don't have any idea about slowly changing dimensions. Okay. Did you face any challenge in creating relationships in your data model till now? Till now, uh, I haven't ex experienced any kind of uh, difficulties in establishing relationship between uh, my tables and data model. What, what all schemas uh, you have implemented till now in the data modeling part? 
Okay, so in my experience, I have uh, implemented the two schemas, star schemas and snowflake schemas. Okay, how star schema is different from a snowflake schema apart from structural difference? Uh, difference of, uh, except the structural difference of star and snowflake schema is that uh, the star the star schema is much more efficient uh, for a smaller data size. So if a very small data set then you can go for star schema because you will not have multiple uh, multiple dimension tables and it be a very simple data model if you have a big uh, data data set who has multiple dimension tables and those dimension tables will also have some more complex data we need to be uh, normalized into further uh, normal dimension tables then you should go for snowflake schema which is optimal for large data sets and data set uh, the dimensions which are having much more normalized dimensions related to them uh, tell me the difference between values and distinct dax function talking about the values function so the values function returns the values of the column that you specify in the values function so it will return the uh, column uh, with all the values uh, of that column uh, as a output so and will that be unique or entire data you will be seeing? It will not be unique. The entire data will be fetched. Uh, the entire column will be fetched. Uh, all the values in that column will be fetched. And the distinct means the all the distinct values from that column, which is uh, uh, mentioned in the function, uh, will be fetched. Okay. And what about blanks? If suppose you have blanks also. If in that particular column which you are talking about, what will be the outcome for values and distinct? So I can't recall about the values, uh, blanks. So Arin, you can see in the chat box, I've pasted something. So this is the DAX code where we are calculating the total sales, where the total cost is greater than 1000. Can I create this measure? Is this a DAX code correct? The, the requirement is simple that you need to calculate the total sales where the total cost is greater than 1000. So according to me, the DAX function is correct. So first of all, we are calculating the total sales measure that is specified in the expression. Mm -hmm. And then we are giving it the filter uh, expression according to which it will calculate the first expression. Okay. Suppose you need to generate month to date sales for a company dynamically. How will you write the DAX code for that? So I have mentioned my DAX code in the chat box. Uh, we are here using the total uh, MDD function, which is total month to date, and we are calculating the total sales. So the uh, cal uh, expression as a total sales measure and then the date is less than uh, the maximum date so that's how we can calculate the total month to date uh, uh, sales okay for... suppose uh, there is a requirement a specific requirement and you need to uh, calculate the total sales happening between for example between 2nd january to 2nd feb how will you do that so i've mentioned my uh, dax code in the chat box so here okay. we are using uh, the dates between function so if we want to calculate the total sales for a specific date time uh, uh, start date and end date so we can use the date between function so the total sales will be calculated for uh, those all dates do you know about all except function yes i know about all except function so how how is it different from all function so all function basically requires uh, basically has a table and it uh, overrides the pre-existing filters on the columns in that table uh, on the other hand all except all except also requires the table but it also requires the column names from which uh, the pre-existing columns will not be overridden so you mentioned the table name then you mentioned all the columns from which the pre-existing filters will not be overridden okay which one is better if function or switch function for conditional cases it depends on the use cases if you have a very simple uh, use case you can go for the if state uh, if uh, if function and if you have multiple conditions to uh, uh, check like in a pl statement then you can use the switch functions to uh, 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 go through different conditions okay do you know about field parameters uh no sir i can't recall about field parameters okay tell me the use case of a tree map visual in power bi tree map so uh, we can use the tree map visual to show uh, a hierarchy in the visual so for example uh, if you have uh, a hierarchy in a company uh, the ceo then you can show uh, all the all the CEO subordinates like vice president and president and like that. So if you want to show a hierarchy of uh, the data, then you can uh, use the tree map visual. Okay. So suppose you have set up a row level security in your Power BI file. Okay. And you got to know suddenly that it is not working properly for some of the users. What will be your immediate steps? First of all, I will check 
the roles assigned to them in power bi service roles assigned to them are correct or not if they are not correct i will assign assign them the correct roles uh, in the second case uh, if uh, they are not assigned any roles i will assign them and i will also check that if the functions that i am using for a role level security are correct or not okay you know about premium license in power bi service yes sir how is it different from premium per user license so uh, premium per user license is basically a li- premium license for an individual user or a, a professional power bi developer and they get all the content creation uh, facil- uh, content creation uh, facilities of the power bi service and a premium license is uh, basically a capacity based license which is provided to an organization where they can uh, give the licensing to their employees who want to work on a report and they also get the premium uh, features as well okay suppose uh, you have developed a power bi report and you publish it to the power bi service and it is an import mode and using the data gateway you have set up the refresh for that report suddenly one day the rep- uh, the report refresh got failed then how will you approach this condition as a developer so my first step would be to uh, go to the uh, settings of my semantic data model and then check uh, if the uh, refresh has been set up incorrectly or uh, what what was the error that was uh, hampering with the refresh if all those things are correct then i would uh, then go into the uh, data model and check uh, what is the problem why the data is not getting refreshed there might be uh, some problem uh, for a dax function or relationship uh, problem okay how many times you can refresh your report in a day you can refresh uh, for a maximum of uh, 48 times and if you need to go beyond that what will you do so if you want to go beyond that uh, you should uh, ask your uh, senior authorities if you if they want to go beyond that then you have to tell that there is a maximum limit that you can refresh the data for a day uh, if they if you explain it then they might be able to go with that limit only that is the limitation you can't go beyond 48 times your data is getting refreshed a lot of times in a day and the user wants to see that data how will you incorporate this in your power bi report so i sir i can't uh, recall of any solution right now. okay do you want to mention any recent challenge that you faced and that you overcome yourself so the recent challenges uh, during my training was uh, about learning the new custom visuals because they were totally different from the uh, visuals that we uh, i have used uh, during my learning journey since the custom you have to learn them from scratch and then learn about the different features that it gives because they are very complex and they are uh, designed for a specific purpose you also have to uh, go through all the test cases and use the test document to uh, go through uh, every feature at least twice or thrice so the learning part is mostly where i faced the difficulties but my uh, manager and the mentors that i have are very helpful they always help me if i get stuck any in any uh, part and yes that is okay aryan uh, i'm done from my side thank you so much for attending this mock interview let me know guys how well he performed in the interview and if you have any better answers for the questions he answered thank you